The Fire Emblem franchise revival has to be one of the biggest and best surprises of this generation. The franchise suffered years of poor sounds and 2013's Fire Emblem Awakening was supposed to be the last one. But thankfully the game was a huge success and saw the series being reinstated as one of Nintendo's main franchises. Anyway, after last year's multi-game epic Fire Emblem Fates, we now have a new Fire Emblem game in Echoes, a full-on from the ground up remake of the second game in the franchise. Let's see how they did, shall we? The story of Echoes starts off a bit like a childhood love story, with sweethearts Arm and Selica making a sort of pact to stay with each other and never leave each other's side. Well, that's until a series of events leads to the pair being separated, not to see each other for about a decade. When you get control of both characters in the future, the pair eventually meet up after all these years, but both characters are fighting for different things. Arm is hoping to stop a Q, while Selica is hoping to find the goddess Miller. And you take control of both these armies as they seek out their own individual goals. The story in Echoes is incredibly strong and feels much easier to get into than Fates with a more straightforward narrative. The leading characters Arm and Selica are strong and likeable leads and the followers are well written with plenty of standout characters. Fire Emblem Gaiden, which is what Echoes is a remake of, is a pretty typical NES sequel, meaning Nintendo switched things up quite drastically from the previous game. And you notice these changes pretty much straight away, as when you first get control of Arm, you don't start on an overhead view of a map, but instead of a first person view of a village. Whenever you enter a new town or village, you get to explore it in a very Professor Layton like manner. You can speak to characters, move from place to place, and even examine the background for items and bits of info. Exploring through these areas is a very welcome change of pace and really does gel well with the game. But for my money, the best new addition here is the dungeons. These let you roam various ruins as either Arm or Selica from a third person over the shoulder view. As you go through these areas you'll encounter some battles, but they're much shorter than the main battles so they shouldn't bother you that much. The dungeons are a bit on the short side but there's a decent amount of them and I do hope they return in a future Fire Emblem game. You travel through Valentia via a big overhead map with many different points of interest that include towns, villages, dungeons and main story battles. It's simple and easy to follow as you lead your two armies onwards. As for the main story activities, when fighting various armies your main objective is pretty much to defeat all the enemies on the screen. It's the same old tried and tested Fire Emblem gameplay and it's still as addicting and engaging as ever. The difficulty is fair and there's plenty of difficulty options for newbies and pros of Fire Emblem. You can choose to keep permadeath off if you wish or turn it on so all your allies return in the next battle. With Echoes there's another get out jail free card called Miller Turn Wheel, which allows you to turn back time and make up for mistakes you made previously. You can do this up to three times per battle or dungeon and you can extend its use by finding cogs hidden around the world. Some hardcore purists may scoff at using it but it helps save time and also makes you think about your moves more and makes you a better strategist. With all these new features and gameplay types and echoes, it is a shame that some recent mainstays from other Fire Emblem games, like the ability to get married and have kids, is gone. Also gone is the ability for two units to unite and as attack as one. It is a disappointment that these mechanics aren't here, but it's probably due with it being a remake why they aren't here. Audio-wise, the game features a brilliant orchestral soundtrack that backs up the story and battles really well. The mix of tunes here is very well done, featuring some nice quiet and playful tunes in the game's calmer moments and some great punchy tunes when the action kicks in. One of the most impressive things about Echoes is that nearly every line of dialogue in the game is fully voice acted, which is really impressive for a handheld title. Considering Awakening and Fates only had voice acting for minor dialogue, this is a huge step up. The voice acting itself is strong, featuring a nice mix of accents and tones, even if some voice snippets are regularly repeated for NPCs. Considering this is the same engine that ran Awakening all those years ago, Echoes looks sublime, with a huge mix of graphical styles from the stylish pixel art that appears on the battlefield and the Professor Layton like anime art style, but the 3D graphics are certainly a huge step up from previous games. Character models are detailed and the battles are well animated, and the dungeons are absolutely gorgeous and do generate a great sense of freedom. Conclusion time now, and Echoes is a wonderful trip to the past, and a brilliant swan song for the franchise on the 3DS. With a strong, engaging, and lengthy storyline, with plenty of cool new additions, Echoes is an incredible game and proves there's still life in the old 3DS yet. 
Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia gets a 9 out of 10 with the title of Brilliant. Thank you for watching my review, like, rate and subscribe and until next time, happy gaming. Bye!